So I'm trying to fix this Rotel RCD855. Ta-da. I restored it, or so I thought, and modded it. See the new new capacitors on the board there. Thing is, it wouldn't work. It worked when it was here, and then I sent it to my friend Bob, and then it wouldn't work. But it would sort of maybe sometimes work, but it would be noisy. Now what I figured out is that the motor that spins the platter there is completely free. It's supposed to be attached to the plastic piece. This is the CDM4-19, it's the Phillips drive. So the motor is supposed to be attached to this plastic piece with two little screws. They're under the platter. The only way to get to them is to remove the platter. The screws are completely loose. The motor is completely free. So you can imagine starting it up. The only thing holding it in place, keeping it from just spinning freely, would be these power supply wires. And what do you know? They're all twisted up. Can you imagine that? This is going to really suck trying to get this platter off. I'm not even sure that it's going to be possible. I don't know if it's glued or just pressed on. But to get it off and then to get it back on and at the right height. Um, in order to make sure at the right height, I folded up these pieces of paper and shoved them under there to make sure that that was a thickness that could fit. And that is a thickness that can just barely fit, that, that bit of folded paper. So that'll be my shim against which I can maybe press the platter back on to the right height when the time comes. Trick then, of course, is going to be getting the frigger, 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 frigger off. Don't know if it's glued or what. I found online a thing, a guide kind of thing, or a picture of a prototype and some instructions for making a platform puller. But somebody else said, you know, just stick a couple of tools on either side to keep it straight and then punch out the middle, punch out the spindle. I have here a punch, a center punch. I don't know if that's going to be a good idea, if it's going to work but I don't see just trying to pull it off without bending something. Oh my God, I think this might actually work. And now since it's not attached, there's really no reason for me to have the shims in there. I can just rest it on the plastic, support it with my hands essentially, and then stick the center punch in there. I did it once and it it moved just to show you what I mean. So here's the center punch. I'll be holding this. This part will be resting on that plastic. Then I just push on this and it punches the spindle out of the platter. So I've gotten it up enough that you can actually see the screws in there. There are three of them and they're totally loose, just completely loose, but nowhere to go. And those are what hold the motor in, but they're not holding the motor in. Now the problem with this method is that once the spindle gets down far enough, the tip of the punch won't reach. So I found a little screw that is on the one hand thin enough to get in there. And just long enough so that it's not topped out or bottomed out, whatever. See if that'll give me that extra length that I need to punch it all the way out. I think I got it. Ah, shit, not yet. Dang. Screw's not quite long enough, maybe. So the little screw worked until it didn't because it bottomed out. So... Next, I'm going to try this little tack. It does have an, maybe enough of a divot in the top of it to hold on to the punch. Well, that tack was a fail. That wasn't a divot. And now I've made a little scratch on the plate. I don't think that's a big deal, though. 
And now I'm going to try a tack with a bigger head on it. I've been successful. There's the motor. And now you can see the, the screws. Those are completely loose. So now I just need to reattach the motor with that. There's a little wire thing that goes across here. And that little plastic bushing rides on that wire. So I gotta get that in place and then get this back on top. That'll be interesting because that's, uh, I don't know. It's one thing to get something like this off. It's a, a bit of a different matter to get it back on. I fix it screwdriver bit set to the rescue. These little screws are require a TR6 Torx or whatever bit. Jeez, man. Fun never ends. While I've got this apart, I figured I would take the opportunity to clean any grit off of there with a nice brush and get a dab of oil on the spindle. All right, I got those screws in there pretty tight now. Of course, the question with something like this is, how tightly do you tighten these screws? I gotta be mindful that this is still plastic. And of course the threads on the motor that are holding the other ends of these screws aren't super, super strong. So I've got them pretty tight. Not as tight as I could possibly get them though. Because I just feel like I could probably tighten them all the way through the plastic and break it. What I'm going to do then to give myself just a little more insurance that the screws won't come back out is to use a little clear nail polish. Just put a little dab of that on each of the screw heads. Couldn't hurt. Well, if I it could hurt if I got too much on there if I really glop it on, so I got to be careful to keep it neat and tidy. All right, I think that'll do it. I got I could see that it kind of wicked capillary down into the gap between the head and the plastic. Hope that'll just keep these things from starting to loosen again. <clears throat> got the motor back in and this little little bushing back on there and this little piece of stiff wire that's just sort of spring-loaded in here to hold that bushing in place. As hard as this thing was to get off, it went back on much more easily, perhaps because of the oil I put on there. <sighs> All right, so essentially I shoved this in between and just pushed it on thumbs on either side, just pushed it straight down as far as I could against the paper because the paper had to be wedged in there tightly to begin with. So, and then it, and then used the calipers to just measure how high it was up off of here. Got it to about within a tenth of a millimeter. Should be good.